It's been a while since I've had GPS up in really any capacity. It's been a while since I've done anything with Ada. But I want to show something that I think a lot more people should be aware of, especially since the community at large seems to ignore this, even though it's something that I reported almost 12 years ago and something could have been done about it. Ada is touted as a highly reliable and highly secure language, that it was meticulously crafted to be suitable for systems where failures are not acceptable. It's not. It's not even close. I'm not the hacking kind of person. I, I, I don't really know how it works. I'm... I can watch videos of speed uh, of video game glitches, especially the speed runs, which I have it all over the place. I'm just like, the oh, fuck you guys find this stuff? It's fascinating, but I, I I don't. Man, I can log 400 hours into a game and not see a single bug. I just, I don't know. I found out about both of the things I am going to be showing when I was 17. I had reported them both when I was 17. One of them, I got told I was horribly misunderstanding things and that Ida's approach was actually the best approach. Now, we know it's not the community overall is well aware of the problem that Ida's approach in this one thing has. So it took the wrong one, and rather than modify it slightly in a future revision, they just chose to stay exactly the same for backwards compatibility. Which means Ida is really much more of a language for backwards compatibility than it is for highly reliable software. But the other one they didn't say I was misunderstanding things. They were saying it shouldn't be changed. That it's not really a problem. And that you need to keep things compatible. But that's business doublespeak. If you don't need to change things, if it's not a problem, then you wouldn't change anything. You're not going to adjust the language itself for something that isn't a problem. But you're also saying you're not going to adjust the language because you need to keep backwards compatibility, which means it is a problem and you're choosing not to. I'm well aware of how business doublespeak works. Don't pull that. You're advocating your software for things where people's lives are actually at stake and you're pulling business doublespeak that puts reliability below other things. Let's get into this. What I'm setting up here is just a very small example library. Um, I'm doing this to show that you don't actually need the sources as part of your project, that as long as you have the library installed, uh, so, so you can pull this off with third-party libraries, um, that you can get access to stuff that's been declared in them privately. So all this is is a color type which has an enumeration of some basic colors, as well as an object type, which I'm clearly not being creative about naming here. Uh, the object type is publicly exposed, but privately declared. So this field is not publicly accessible. You can only accept, uh, modify this in really anything that has private viewability of this. 
So because of that, because we cannot use a record aggregate, we have to use a constructor function. Uh, you can see it just takes the color and returns the object. And because I need something to show this off, I have a very contrived example where it just uh, does, you know, put by Ida's convention that's right to the console, uh, the color inside of the object. And you can see, I have this partially incomplete for right now because I want to show you guys that an error in fact does happen, but also kind of the problem with it. Uh, we have the constructor function, and like I said, it just, it's a wrapper around the aggregate since we can't actually write this ourselves in code that's consuming this. Um, and then we have this. Now, this is incomplete. I haven't handled all of the cases. And if we go and build all, you can see... Oh, I forgot I had tweaked the name of this a little bit. Okay, so you can see that it's complaining about the case that we had to put in there. So you can make that go away by And now you've handled all of the cases. So what's wrong with this? Well, here's where you're really introduced to the first part about how Ada makes you feel good about your code, but really isn't protecting it. This is that thing I was talking about with how the programming community at large knows what's wrong with this, but Ida tells you it's fine. And Ida's compilers are really strict, and the language is remarkably well-defined and was meticulously crafted, so surely they'd notice what's wrong with this. I mean, it, it doesn't look like anything's wrong with this. Right? Let's, let's trust the compiler here. just so that I can show how the language gets this wrong. But we're basically done here now that this is built. Um, I just want to remind you guys again that while this type is visible, this field is privately declared. So anything consuming this will not be able to see this. Okay. Uh, we've got this built. Now I need to install it, and I'm using GPS just so that I have easy access to GPRs, and uh, that means I'm going to be doing this. So that should be installed, and just because I'm so used to these tools breaking, uh, nope, it did manage to install it. So we are good. Now I'm going to switch over to my other project, and I've been calling this abuse because that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm abusing the language. Um, oh, I do need to change this just to show off uh, something that is part of the reason why people wind up having too much confidence in Ida and think that it really protects you when it's not.
Okay, so I decided to just add another package and we can just reference it. Um, it's not going to build this way anyways, uh, because this is what people normally try to do. But we're just going to add a procedure called violate, and the idea is that it's going to violate the supposed protections that Ida has. And we're going to work on, and I, I rename that, so we just need to do this object type, and I'll need to change that here. So what we'd like to do is a view overlay to mess with the um, enumeration. And these are actually ridiculously easy to set up. Um, for int, new address, use object, and we want to overlay the integer and the object's color. But you can see that I'm not, it's not working. Um, this isn't an issue right now with the code that I'm setting up. This is an issue with GPS and GPS isn't the, the one that isn't working. Uh, so let's try doing this. We're gonna just, no, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, so let's just try building this because um, I think it's an issue of it not having the cross references that it's supposed to have. Uh, object type. Let's try building that again. Okay, okay. perfect. So we need to with uh, example and use example. And now um, still not getting anything. For int view address use object. Okay, well, either way, uh, if you were to go in and reference this, you can see that the because um, the specs have to be distributed regardless. And you can see here in the spec, because the private part of the specification is still has to be published, uh, you can see that there is a field called color. So let's just try to access that regardless. And we want to say that it's overlaid onto the same address. So that if we do this, we'll set both of them at the same time. And sure enough, it says that there's no color, uh, no selector for color. Uh, for the private uh, type object type. And, I mean, technically there is. Uh, I, I seem certain modern languages give a much better error message uh, here, but this is, it really isn't incorrect because there's no publicly visible selector color. So that's fine. That's, that's fine. Um, you really don't benefit at all by it saying that, oh, well, that selector is only private. Like, this is fine. As a result of that, people will think that, oh, well, it's it's got you covered. It's making sure that you can't access that because you declared it as private. Wrong. The way around it is to access that as a child package. And I need to change these as well, which I should have done before I started. Uh, but you can see that we're not doing anything that we didn't do before. This is literally the exact same code. The only exception is that it is 
a child package of the one that we're trying to to mess with. And this built that's already not a good sign. Um, I can show this as well. You can see... Or GPS isn't going to do its thing. Uh, let's try. No, I guess I'm just not getting any cross-reference information for anything. That's, that's lovely. Okay, so... Assuming this was working properly, GPS was working properly, uh, it would have an IntelliPop, IntelliSense pop-up for color because it can now see that field is there. But this built, so let's run this. Now right now we're not doing anything manipulative, we're not calling the violate procedure, uh, we're just you know, initializing the object with the red color and putting to the console, now this should say I'm red. And sure enough, we get I'm red. Good. Now, naively, 42 is obviously not one of the enumeration members. You might think that this is working by, I don't know, not actually putting things on the same exact address, but that's literally all we're doing here is we're saying int view is 42. We are not touching object color. We are not reassigning that at all. Not obviously anyways. There's That's why this is called a view overlay. You're, you're viewing an address as another type, which does allow you to write as another type, and it's clearly not hard to set up. Um, so that's all we're doing, is we're saying int view is 42. That's it. And it already said our library was all good. And boom, we just threw an exception because this isn't good. This isn't good at all. You see, what we pulled off is, well, actually numerous things. Uh, violation of the open-close principle in that uh, when you're doing good object-oriented programming, you should not be able to modify the type. At the very least, it should be validated when modifying. Now, it has no way at all to validate itself with what I did to it. Uh, normally, the approach that object-oriented languages take, at least m ones that have developed with the times and have kept current on good computer science principles, they deal with this through patterns. Or, not patterns, I've got my mind elsewhere. Through um, properties. The idea being that when you set the property, you will... Um, potentially do some validation. You can have validation logic inside of that. So it's... It looks like it's a value. A field, rather. Um, you can assign it a value, just like it's a field. But it does that validation. That's really useful. And it doesn't do that. You can use the sort of pattern, the, the, the property pattern that Java uses, um, but you really should integrate that as a first part of the language. It's a safety thing, and you're a language which claims to care very much about safety of code and 
good, reliable software. And another thing is that what I'm talking about with the case statements and how we violated the enumeration, what the community at large has realized is that your compilers really should check to make sure that all um, all declared values are handled, but also that there is a default case. So not that all valid values are handled and then that's the end of it, but that all possible values are handled. And Ada doesn't do that. It only checks that all valid values are handled. And so we just introduced an exception to code that really should never throw an exception. With barely any lines of code. It's done, that's not good. Finally, the, I would say, just really glaring problem here uh, that allows basically all of this to happen is that Ida's accessibility modifiers are basically non-existent and are severely limited in the way that they are implemented. Um, everything is just either public or private. And it's not private in the way that basically every other language thinks of private. It's not private. It's, I can't be publicly vis uh, viewed, but I can be viewed from inside of my package and inside of all child packages. Now, there are uses for that. Uh, I, I think maybe what you'd probably want to do is like a, a variation of internal, uh, where it's... Well, exactly that, where it's viewable inside your own package and inside child packages, but not beyond that point. Uh, maybe even better yet is the true internal, where it's visible from inside your uh, assembly, inside your library in this case, um, but not outside of that. There's no concept of protected either, and that introduces quite a few problems. Uh, in fact, the private happens to be both protected and internal, as they're normally thought of, and is about as far away from private as you could get without actually being fully public. It's really bad, and a lot of these things build up to make you think that your software is a lot more reliable than it really is is. Now there are more problems. I'll save those for another time. Uh, I'm gonna get some flack for this video, so that should be fun. If there's enough of it, I'll do a hate comment reading. But until the next video, have a good one.